All right, the Eagles came away with an absolute haul of picks, resulting in one of the most athletic classes in the draft with several different analysts giving Howie Roseman an A+. So let's talk about the insane potential, how they fill positions of need, and all the other takeaways from the draft. Oh yeah, and the Eagles signed a massive offensive tackle. But first, let's run it. What's up, everybody? The Eagles walked into the 2024 draft with eight draft picks and then ended up magically walking out with nine selections and also a third round pick, fourth round pick, and fifth round pick next year, which is why several analysts, including Pro Football Focus, listed the Birds as the winner of the draft with an A plus grade. Obviously, the night one steal of the draft and Quinion Mitchell played a huge factor, with the 22 year old miraculously falling to the Eagles at 22. I mean, this move was tailor-made for Philly, because not only did Howie Roseman rank near the very top in terms of most valuable draft class based on when players would fall, and sure, we could argue about projections or whether or not this ends up meaning anything, but one thing isn't debatable, and that's athleticism, with the Eagles drafting the second most athletic class out of all NFL teams. Naturally, not a shock for Howie Roseman, but the Birds ended up taking seven of their nine players that ranked in the nine or higher category according to the relative athletic score. Again, if you want any insight into who Howie's targeting, just look at top 30 visits, who scores the highest in athleticism, and which guys are those red star players. Don't worry, in case you're not familiar, I'll get to what the red star players means and all that in just a second, but let's get back to recapping the draft. Our new cornerback Q showed up in Philly to take in questions from the media as well as do promos with the social team. Yet one of my favorite sound bites was his response to which quarterback he wants to intercept first. Jalen Hurts. <laughs> Burger dancer. Oh yeah, he also said that he wants to take on Devontae Smith first in one-on-ones in practice. Meanwhile, Eagles second round selection of Cooper DeGene, but who will forever be known as Cooper DeJohn from here on out, said he'd take on AJ or Devontae. Either way, the fact that these dudes are going to get that type of competition day in and day out is massive for their development. Plus, if you want to talk about athleticism, Cooper DeJohn ranked as the most athletic pick for the Eagles in the entire draft with a relative athletic score of 9.85 out of 10. Now, obviously, anyone who's watched him knows it's not just the athleticism because this dude's been productive on the field. Since his passer rating allowed over the last 800 coverage snaps is just a 45. I know the college game and NFL are clearly different, but to put that in perspective, James Bradbury played 697 snaps and allowed a passer rating of 108.6 last season, which is why Ruben Frank and many others were quick to point out Howie Roseman's choice of words saying they got two first round draft picks at a position of need. Basically, meaning JB's headed out the door. By the way, yes, technically DeJon was drafted in the second round. However, according to many analysts, he was ranked top 15 on their draft board. So I think to give him the respect of saying he was basically a first round pick that you stole in the second round is pretty valid. Especially with James Palmer sharing the Eagles believe Cooper DeGene was the best overall football player in the group of top cornerbacks based on situational awareness, tackling, spatial awareness, and natural instincts on the field. And although there's not a for sure about his true position, they have a plan in Fangio's defense. They talked to me with about all three pers- uh, uh, three positions. Um, you know, I, I don't have a preference. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a football player, so you put me on the field, I'm, I'm going to go play football. Um, whether it's inside, outside, um, at safety, wherever it is, you know, I, this is a game I love to play as long as I'm on, on the field, out there. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be happy and I'm, I'm going to give it my all every, every time I step on the field. Also, really quickly on the James Bradbury situation, because I've gotten a few questions about what's going to happen to JB. Personally, I don't see a way he stays on this team. Of course, you're right to say there's no way Philly cuts him right now since it'd be $15 million in dead money. However, if the Eagles designate Bradbury as a post-June 1st cut, then it's only taking a $4 million hit in terms of dead money. Which again, either you do that this year or you keep him around until next year and you cut him then, but at that point, it's still $3 million in terms of dead money, so why prolong the inevitable? Anyway, what's your preference and what do you expect Howie to do about JB? No matter what he does, I'll definitely trust it. Because heck, take a look at how the Carson Wentz trade officially closes out. Howie Roseman ended up using the picks acquired in that trade to essentially get Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown, Jalen Carter, and Cooper DeJohn. Like I mentioned a second ago, that's practically four first-round picks. You're a wizard, Harry. Howie's just different, and I guess he's got a new nickname according to Eagles third-round pick Jalex Hunt. It's Howie. What's up, Big Hunter? (laughs) Uh, We're going to pick you right here, brother. Welcome to Philly. We're excited. We're excited to get you, man. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Hey, hold on. Jalex. Hold on. Jalex. Jalex. Hold on. You hear me? I'm going to Philly. I don't think you got some. It's going crazy there. Jalex, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Everybody hey, loud right now. 
Yeah, I hear that. Hold on. You deserve it. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, congrats, man. Go be with, go, right, go enjoy this moment. I'll talk to you later. Can't wait to get you I here. I got you, hey man. All right. Hey, coach, I need the playbook ASAP. All right, we'll get it to you, man. We can get it to you quick. All right, baby. <laughs> That's phenomenal. And it's also phenomenal to see how he take three defensive players that are crazy athletes in the first three rounds. And the six foot four, 252 pound former safety turned pass rusher may be a little raw, but how he called Hunt the ultimate developmental player with a rook ready to do whatever it takes to reach his full potential. I'm ready to do whatever I need to do for the team. So in the press conference last night, I was called like the perfect developmental player which is a huge honor to me. They see a lot of upside, and it's something I'm excited to grow into. So I'm definitely patient enough to put in the work and and do what I need to do in order to reach my potential. But if there's any way that I can contribute right out of the gate, I'm willing to do it. I'm all for it. The fact that Hunt has the type of versatility he does along with the speed of a 46440 and ridiculous measurables is really intriguing. Yes, I realize we want players to return dividends as quickly as possible. However, I'm very confident he'll do that fairly soon. Of course, while the next pick in the fourth round at 127 took a while, since if anyone was hanging out on the live stream, it essentially became Groundhog Day with trade after trade after trade after trade. Sorry. But it did feel like that as Howie Roseman tied the NFL draft record with eight trades over the course of three days and three of them in the fourth round. Stip, stop, stip, stop, stip, stop. In the end, it worked out and we're better for it. As Howie also said coming into the draft that there was the feeling that they didn't have as many 2025 picks as they'd like, so we're able to beef up that category while filling a lot of needs this year. And one of those areas was taking Clemson running back Will Shipley, who I'll be honest, was not my favorite pick out of the options available at that point in the draft. However, he's undoubtedly a weapon and clearly fits the bill of another athlete for Howie Roseman's big board. And after Eagles running back coach Jamal Singleton was able to get a private workout with Shipley, the birds were eyeing him as a potential for quite some time. Also, it was pretty cool to hear Saquon Barkley reached out immediately after the Eagles took Shipley. I'm a, a huge Saquon fan. He actually reached out to me uh, pretty quickly after I got drafted, just a couple minutes. Um, so I'm, I'm so excited to, to just share a backfield with all those guys. Uh, you know, I, I know that I'm going to go in, I'm going to work my butt off, um, and I'm going to do whatever the, the team needs me to do to be successful. Um, you know, whatever that takes is, is what I'm willing to do. So uh, could not be happier to, to learn from someone like Saquon and, and share a backfield with, with all the great backs that we have. Saquon's definitely a real one for doing that. Of course, there are some, like Ernie the Cowboys fan, who will just say anything to cope. Like, for example, saying Eagles fan's gonna try to sell Will Shipley as the next Christian McCaffrey bit. Except, hold on, if we go back in time before the draft, Ernie seemed to be on that Will Shipley hype train, saying if the ringback board is cleared out and the Cowboys don't trade up, I'll convince everyone that Will Shipley is the second coming of Christian McCaffrey. Hypocrisy knows no bounds. I almost feel bad for Dallas having to watch Philly have such a great draft, especially my A&M friends who are going to have to watch Anaya Smith come to Philly with a legit chance to win the wide receiver three spot in Kellen Moore's offense. Because even though he was the rare pick not listed in the insanely athletic category, Smith is a Swiss army knife with the ability to make people miss in space and a knack for short area explosiveness, while also having several scouts saying he's the guy whose competitiveness will never be questioned. Thankfully, very much different from another player we all know. And the same can be said for our next fifth round pick in Jeremiah Trotter Jr. With the legacy continuing with the Axeman. After the Eagles selected the Clemson linebacker with the 155th pick. And let me just say the behind the scenes look made me lose it. Jeremiah, how, long, how, how old were you when I first met you? <laughs> I'm two, sure two, you know. three, yeah. four. Congrats, man. Thank you. Just really huge congrats. Congrats to uh, your dad. And I loved your mother, so. Thank you. Congrats. Can't wait to see you. Thank you. I, I appreciate you guys. I love that. And I also love Eagles Nation pointing out that Jeremiah Trotter Jr. got drafted, had a son, had an entire Eagles legendary career of his own, raised his son, who grew up to become an NFL player, and get drafted by the same team his dad did, all before the Dallas Cowboys reached another NFC championship. It makes sense why the Cowboys are coping. Of course, let's be real, no one's expecting Junior to be like his old man, or at least not right out of the gate. Even though he will ask to wear 54, and come on, he was meant to wear that jersey. So let's give one away. Go ahead and smash that like button like the Axeman would, and then go into the comments and type in Axeman, where I'll pick one random winner during my Tuesday night live stream to get the jersey. By the way, even though seeing Trotter in Midnight Green or Kelly Green will be awesome, Howie made sure to share that this wasn't no token selection. 
you got to stick to your board, you know. So we, we can't um, make up a grade on any player just because we like them. You know, I, I make a joke a lot of time. You know, the best person I know in the world is my wife, and I don't want her playing linebacker for us either. So uh, I think for us, at the end of the day, you have to have a certain skill set to play at any position in the National Football League. And so uh, we're looking for a skill set, and we're drafting players based on a skill set. So uh, as much as, you know, you like those stories, and it's a, it's a great story um, with, without the ending, you know, we just started that story. But it, it's got to be a skill set, and he's got a skill set, and that's why we drafted him. He's got mentality. That's why we drafted him. And we're looking forward to him being his own person, you know, not having to walk in anyone's footsteps, but creating his own legacy. It's amazing that it took until super late in the fifth round for the Eagles to select an offensive lineman, which is ironic because I was told there was no way that was going to happen. Although on that topic, the Eagles actually had plans to draft a lineman earlier, but said the draft didn't break their way to take one early, so decided to stick with their board, which meant taking another athletic road grader in Michigan's Trevor Keegan. Seriously, Justin could tell you, or I will, but this dude's a mauler in the run game. Now sure, Tyler Steen is the odds-on favorite today to start, but it wouldn't surprise me to see a dude who didn't allow a single sack in 2023 and posted a career best pass blocking grade last season to end up winning the job. I mean, he just looks like he's made for the job. Plus, at 6'5", 310 pounds, and being one of the most athletic dudes in the class, I'd say Stout's got a couple great options for that right guard spot. And I don't know what it is, but I think this dude's going to fit in quite well. Oh yeah, he also wore his Deshaun Jackson jersey from 6th grade during his introductory press conference. So yeah, I might be leaning towards his way to get the nod. Also, I talked about the Red Star player thing earlier with how he admitting to drafting five of them. But as John McMullen pointed out, Red Star players are guys who exemplify what the Eagles organization want players to be based on things like character, intelligence, and playing style. And although the GM wouldn't confirm who those players were, the speculation is that the five Red Star players are Will Shipley, Cooper DeJoy, John, Jalex Hunt, Trevor Keegan, and Dylan McMahon. Also, for the record, the Eagles only drafted one Red Star player last season, and that player was Sidney Brown. Of course, we know Sidney Brown was also one of those dudes who was a physical freak and is trending toward being ready to play week one. But the guy who might be the most ridiculous physical anomaly from this class is Eagles six-round pick Johnny Wilson. Like, the fact this dude is 6'7", 235 pounds, and ran a 4'5", 240, and again, by the way, just for the record, that is three one-hundredths slower than A.J. Brown. And he actually out-jumped Swole Batman with a 37-inch vertical. So it's not really a surprise that Wilson owns one of the most dominant and impressive catch radiuses for receiving prospects in the last couple years. Plus, scouts labeled Wilson as a physical freak for opposing DBs to deal with, since he uses his size fairly well to outmuscle corners and isn't afraid to mix it up in the run game. Now, I don't really see him getting a whole lot of usage unless AJ goes down or Devontae Smith, so fingers crossed, knock on wood, that doesn't happen, and he can also have some pretty egregious drops at times. However, you gotta love the potential for this dude and to add to the receiving core. And then, the final selection in the 2024 draft was North Carolina State interior offensive lineman Dylan McMahon, who had 44 starts at NC State along with experience playing all all three interior positions, and posted the second best three cone short shuttle out of all offensive linemen at the combine, which ended up ranking as the 13th most athletic center out of 619 prospects since 1987. And like Philly Nation pointed out, Dylan is a great insurance option for Cam Jurgens as a backup along with Matt Hennessy. Oh, another cool thing is that McMahon and Trevor Keegan, who I talked about a second ago, have been working out together in Florida the entire offseason. Anyway, like I said, the Eagles got some crazy athletes with insane potential. But as we all know, it doesn't stop there because the Eagles signed seven undrafted free agents, which shout out to Anthony DeBona. I've got a link in the description if you want to check it out. But let's start with Baylor's defensive tackle, Gabe Hall, since I went to Baylor and can vouch for the interior D lineman. For real, he's going to be an interesting name to watch because he can definitely be a game wrecker and really impressed at the Senior Bowl. And then there's Maryland offensive tackle Gottlieb Ayeds. Maybe I said the name correctly, but like Anthony pointed out, is obvious thanks to his absurd athleticism at 6'4", 310 pounds. And another potential Stoutland project is mammoth 6'8", 355-pound tackle Anim Donqua out of Howard. Personally, I just like to see that Andrew DeCecco had both offensive linemen as his draftable players for Stout to refine, so to get them as UDFAs feels like a steal. And then, of course, how he had to get at least one Philly dog, this time in the case of running back Kendall Milton as an undrafted free agent. There's also safety Kanan Williams out of Tulsa and another safety Andre Sam out of LSU. However, the most likely to make the roster is perhaps Tennessee tight end McAllen Castles after Aaron Wilson reported that he got a $230,000 guaranteed as a UDFA. All right, again, that's obviously no guarantee. However, that is a lot of money in terms of UDFA contracts, so it's at least a name to keep an eye on. I should also mention that the Eagles are inviting a few players to their rookie minicamp next weekend, with recently retired and former fastest player in the NFL, John Ross, set to show up for camp. Of course, even though Ross has a lot of speed, I'm not sure I'd put money on him to show out enough to make the team. Although, given his burner ability and the fact that he's attempting 
attempting to make a comeback, I wouldn't put it past another team to eventually sign him. Anyway, after coming away from the draft, I could definitely see why or how Philly won the draft. I know I'm obviously a little bit biased, but what grade would you give the Eagles? All right, the other news to get into per Adam Schefter is that the Eagles are signing massive offensive tackle Mackay Becton to a deal on Monday, assuming he can pass his physical, which of course that name may sound familiar to you since he practically tried to end Derek Barnett's career in Philly by clowning him. Okay, yeah, DB was probably already headed out anyway, but this is really good news since Philly will now get the 25-year-old on a one-year deal for $5.5 million and allow them to have some depth for Jordan Mailata and Lane Johnson. Granted, Becton's dealt with some injury trouble on his knees and ankles over the last few years, and at 6'7", 363 pounds, it's understandable that we want to make sure his physical is all systems go before officially committing to him. Yet again, this is one of those Howie Roseman low-risk, high-reward moves. Because who better for Becton to learn from than Jeff Stoutland? I mean, obviously, you didn't get your tackle in the draft, but between the O-lineman signed and now Becton, the Eagles are clearly one of the most complete teams. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments, and also make sure to hit that subscribe button because we have non-stop content all through throughout the offseason. Oh yeah, and a few more giveaways as well. Until next time, this has been the Philly Special.